What's up everyone? In this video, we're going to look at the World of Warcraft game data APIs in regards to access tokens. Each API endpoint you hit will need an access token. So in this video, we're going to look at how to get an access token by hitting the token URI specified in the documentation. This is the token URI, and we're going to make a curl call using PHP, pass along the correct parameters, our client ID, our client secret, write a script, and we're going to get an access token back. Here I got my access token, and on top of that, we're going to save our access token into a database so we can continually use that access token. This way, we're not requesting a new access token every time we make an API call. Here in my database, wow, game data API, I have a config table. Once the access token gets requested, it gets saved in here, ID access token, and the value is the access token we got back. Before we go any further, if you guys did not check out my last video, it was an overview of the developer portal on develop.battle.net. This is where we can get all the documentation, we can set up a client, get our client ID, our client secret, and we can also get a list of all available endpoints to us on the game data API. So go check out the last video, get the overview, and then come on back. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a database. Call this WOW Game Data API, TF General CI, and click Create. Now that we got a database, we're going to create ourselves a config table. This is where we're going to store our access token, the ID, and the value. So we're going to want two columns, one for the ID and one for the value. Hit the Save button, and now we have two columns in our database, an ID and a value. I'm going to make this one the primary key. That way it will always be unique. Then I'm going to insert one row. This is going to be the access token. I'm going to leave it blank because we're going to get the access token from the token URI. All right, one row inserted. Now let's browse our table. We see we have our ID access token. Now all we need is a value. Now we can start coding. Over in my www blog code folder, I'm going to create myself a new folder. We're going to call this one WoW Game Data API. Inside here, we're going to create ourselves a defines file, which will hold our client ID, our client secret, our database credentials, and anything we need to find globally. Then we are going to write our get access token script. Last file I'm going to have is a functions file. This is going to include any global functions we need. That way they're easily accessible. All we have to do is include them in future files. Open those files up in Sublime, and we're going to start with the defines.php file. Up here we define our API creds, and down here we define our DB creds. Our client ID, we're going to get that from our developer portal on Blizzard. I'm going to copy my client ID right here. I'm going to place that right there. Then I'm going to show my secret. I'm going to copy my secret, and I'm going to paste it right here. Down here we have our host, our database host, local host. We're running this locally database name, the name of the database we just created, user and password. For localhost, user is root, and I don't have a password on my local box. We're going to save that, and then we are done with this file. Now we can move on to the functions.php file. First thing we want to do here is include our defines file. Now we have access to all of those constants we just defined in the defines.php. Our first function is going to be to generate an access token. To do this, we are going to use a curl call and hit that token URI that we saw in the documentation. Back in the documentation, I'm going to copy this token URI and I'm going to save it as a variable. We're going to call this our token URI. And the region has to be replaced with one of the valid regions. In this case, I'm going to specify US. If we step into the client credentials flow, this will tell us exactly what we need to do for this endpoint. In order to get an access token, we must make a POST request with the form data grant type client credentials. So in my code, I'm going to create an array, and this will contain the POST data that we need to send along. In this case here, it's grant type, and the value is client credentials. So we're going to pass along these parameters to this URI. The other thing to note in the documentation is we need to pass along our client ID and our client secret. 
as shown here. The application must pass basic HTTP auth credentials using the client ID and the user client secret as the password. So in our post request, we need to set a curl option and use the password. This line right here, we're setting our curl option. We're passing along the user and password just as they told us to do. We pass along our client ID, and these are from the defines.php file. Our client ID as the user, and then the um, client secret as the password. Here's our curl call. We have our client ID, our client secret. We're going to pass along the parameters grant type equals client credentials, and then our token URI. Next, we can set the endpoint, the token URI. Now we're telling curl to curl this token URI. Now, for curl, we need to set the parameters, which is our params array right here. Since we're making a post, we set our curl options, curl opt post fields, and then we use the build query PHP function to pass along our grant type equals client credentials. Then we're going to make sure our curl request uses post by specifying the curl option post to a value of one. Then we have a few general curl options, and then we're going to get back our response. Here we've gotten back our curl response. We've executed the request, and we closed it. Then I'm going to put the response that we got back from curl into this access token response variable. I'm going to JSON decode it and set the second parameter to true, which means we're going to get ourselves back a nice PHP array from whatever the response was from curl. Now that we have our response, we need to check it to make sure that we actually got an access token back. If this is set, then we know we have an access token in our response. In that case, we're going to create ourselves a status of OK. Now if this is not set, in the else case, we're going to fail. We'll also do a message. In the case that we have it, we'll say that we found an access token. In case we do not have an access token, we need to fail and say something went wrong. Then we want to return the array with our status and message. So far, so good. We have created a curl call, getting an access token, checking to see if we actually got one, and then we're going to return the status and the message so we know what happened. Now we can test this function out. We're going to call this function over in our getAccessTokens.php. First thing to do is include functions. Now we can actually call this function right here. I'm going to generate a new access token and set it to this variable access token. Then we're going to display it out. We're going to store whatever we get back from our function generate access token right here. Oh, we first got to define it as a function. It's going to return our status message, our status and our message. And then we're going to display it out. We're going to head over to the browser and hit our get access token script. And it looks like it worked. OK, new access token saved and ready for use. Except for it's not saved yet because we haven't implemented the part where it saves it to the database. And that's the next part. Back in the functions file in our generate access token function, we're going to save it only if we actually get an access token back. So in this if statement is where we're going to be doing our updating. We're going to create a new function called update access token, and we're going to pass along the access token that we just got. This will update our access token in the database in the access token row. It will update the value. This will get updated whenever we get a new access token. Here we defined our update access token function to take in an access token. Whatever we pass in here, we're going to update in the database. In order to talk to the database, we need to create a database connection. So I'm going to create another function. This function will return us a connection to our database. And we're going to use some PDO to connect to our database. In the connection here, we do a new PDO. And we specify our DB host, our name, the user, and the password for our database, which we set in our defines file. I had, this was localhost. The name of the database is WoW Game Data API and the user is root, and there's no password on my local host. So this is going to return us a database connection. 
to our database connection variable here inside of our update access token function. Once we have a database connection, we need to write the SQL statement. Here we have prepared our statement. We're updating the config table. We're setting the value equal to the uh, access token that's coming in where the ID is going to equal access token. These are just the placeholders because this is the prepare statement. Now we can define the parameters that we're going to actually be replacing those placeholders. When we finally execute the statement, we are passing in the parameters, which are going to replace the value and the ID. ID will re be replaced with access token, and the value will re be replaced with the variable access token, which contains the actual access token. So we're updating the config table here, where the ID equals access token. And then we're setting that value. Now that we have our update access token working, it will get updated whenever a new access token comes back. One other thing that we're going to pass along is the raw response in the return, just so we have it for reference. Heading back to our get access token.php script, we're going to run it, and this time we should see a raw response array with our access token. It tells us how long it is to expire, which the access tokens only last for 24 hours until you need to generate a new one. This access token should be saved in our config table. Let's refresh this, and our access token has been saved in the value column for the ID of access token, just as we planned. And that is how we request an access token for use with the World of Warcraft game data APIs. We got our access token, we saved it to a database, we're ready to use this access token to hit any of the API endpoints. This access token is good for 24 hours. When that time is up, a new access token will be generated and it will be updated in the database. In the next video, I'm gonna be using this access token from the database to hit the different endpoints on some of the different APIs available to us. That's gonna wrap this video up, guys. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you wanna see coded up next. I'll catch you later.